Hey guys, how's it going? In this video we're going to go over two worked examples to show you how to do problems involving projectile motion where objects are launched horizontally. Now if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Just a reminder that these are the kind of questions you would have done at National 5 level. Question 1 says that a ball rolls off a table at 3 metres per second. The table has a height of 1.2 metres above the ground. Part A says to calculate the range, i.e. the horizontal distance of the ball. Well, whenever we're dealing with projectiles that have been launched horizontally, we need to treat the horizontal and vertical motion of the ball separately. And just like we said in the theory, it's always a good idea to sketch the situation first. So here's our table. Here's a ball on the table and it's moving to the right at 3 meters per second. And we're also told the vertical height of the table is 1.2 meters. And in order to calculate the horizontal distance, the range, we can use the equation SH equals VH times T, which we looked at in the theory video. But you might be thinking that we don't have all the necessary information yet for the horizontal motion, because we only have the horizontal velocity of 3 meters per second, but we don't have the time taken for the ball to fall horizontally. So what we can do first of all is look at the vertical motion and work out the time, and then we can use that time in the equation for the horizontal motion. So for the vertical motion, first of all, we can use SUVAT. So writing down SUVAT, we know the displacement is minus 1.2 meters, and the reason we use the negative here is because we're defining upwards to be positive and downwards to be negative, and the ball is going to be traveling down the way. We then have our initial velocity u of 0 meters per second, and that's always going to be the case for these kind of projectiles. Because remember to begin with, the ball has not started moving vertically yet. We don't know what the final velocity is. We know the acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second squared, again because we've defined downwards to be negative. And lastly, the time is what we're trying to find. So I'm going to put a star next to the t because that's the one we want here. And because we don't know what v is, we're going to choose an equation of motion which does not have v in it. So writing down our equation, we have s equals ut plus a half at squared and substituting in the numbers we get minus 1.2 equals 0 plus a half times minus 9.8 times t squared simplifying both sides just by multiplying both sides by 2 to get rid of this fraction and then dividing both sides by the 9.8 gives us t squared equals 0 0.24 which gives us a time value of 5 seconds so now that we've found the time, we're not quite finished yet because remember we need to use the time to find the horizontal range. So writing down SUVAT for the horizontal motion, we don't know what S is, we know that U is 3 meters per second, we don't know what V is horizontally, we know the acceleration is 0 meters per second squared because horizontally the ball is not accelerating, it's traveling at a constant velocity, and lastly the time is 0 0.5 seconds. So we can put a star next to S because that's the one we're trying to find. So we can use S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Substituting in the numbers now, we get 3 times 0 0.5 plus a half times 0 times 0 0.5 squared. Notice that this term on the right hand side is just going to disappear because we've got a times by 0 there, which means we're basically just dealing with s equals ut, a speed distance time, which is what we did at national 5 level. So putting those numbers now into your calculator should give you an answer of 1.5 meters. Part B says that a second ball identical to the first is rolled off the table at 10 meters per second. Is the time taken for the second ball to hit the ground less than, the same as, or greater than the time taken for the first ball to hit the ground? Explain your answer. Well, the time is going to be the same as, and the reason is, the horizontal velocity does not affect the time taken for an object to fall vertically. It does, however, affect the range of the object. So remember, it's just the acceleration due to gravity that's going to affect the time taken for an object to fall. Because remember, with projectile motion at higher level, we ignore air resistance. Lastly, part C says to calculate the range of the second ball. Well, we've just said in part B that the time is going to be unaffected for the second ball, so we can just do SUVAT again for the horizontal motion, and we know that the time is going to be the same. So for the horizontal motion doing SUVAT, we don't know what S is, we know that u is 10 meters per second this time, v is still unknown, the acceleration is still going to be 0 meters per second squared for horizontal motion, and the time is the same as before, 0 0.5 seconds. So again, we can put a star next to s, as that's the one we're trying to find, and we can choose the equation of motion which does not have v in it. So we've got s equals ut plus a half at squared. We know that this is going to simplify just down to s equals ut, but we can just sub in to show that's the case anyway. So putting in our numbers, we get 10 times 0 0.5 plus a half times 0 times 0 0.5 squared. So this term disappears and we get 10 times 0 0.5 gives us 5 meters. Question 2 says that a bomber plane flies with a horizontal velocity of 100 meters per second at a height of 320 meters above a tank. 
It drops a bomb and scores a direct hit on the tank. So you've got the bomber plane and the bomb, and the bomb is going to be travelling at the same initial horizontal velocity as the plane, because it's attached to the plane. You'll then see we've got the vertical height of 320 metres, and we don't know what the horizontal range is, so chances are we're going to be asked to calculate that during the question. For part A, it says to calculate the time taken for the bomb to hit the tank. Well, just like we did in question 1, for any object that is launched horizontally, we need to treat the horizontal and vertical motion of the bomb separately. And to find the time, we're going to consider the vertical motion of the bomb. So for the vertical motion, we can write down SUVAT. So we've got S equals minus 320 metres. We've used negative here because we're defining upwards to be positive and downwards to be negative. So because the bomb is moving down the way, it's going to be a negative displacement. Our initial vertical velocity is always going to be 0 metres per second for this type of projectile. Our final vertical velocity is unknown. Our acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second squared, again because we're defining downwards to be negative. And lastly, the time is what we're trying to find, so I'm going to put a star next to that one. We then need to use an equation of motion which does not have v in it, so we're going to use s equals ut plus a half at squared. Substituting in the numbers now, we get minus 320 equals 0 plus a half times minus 9.8 times t squared. Timesing both sides by 2 now to get rid of this fraction and dividing both sides by 9.8 gives us t squared equals 65.3 and taking the square root of both sides gives an answer of t equals 8.1 seconds. Part B says to calculate the range of the bomb. So remember the range is the horizontal distance travelled by the bomb. So looking back at the picture, that is this horizontal distance here that we're going to try and work out. So we're going to consider the horizontal motion of the bomb. So writing down SUVAT, we don't know what the horizontal displacement S is. We know that the initial horizontal velocity is 100 metres per second, because remember the bomb is travelling with the plane at the same speed. And the final velocity is unknown. We know the horizontal acceleration of the bomb is 0 metres per second squared. And last Lastly, the time is 8.1 seconds, because remember the time for the vertical motion is going to be the same as the time for the horizontal motion, and we just worked out that time in part A. So we're trying to find the horizontal distance here, the range, so I'm going to put a star next to S, and we can choose the equation of motion which does not have V in it. So writing down S equals UT plus a half AT squared, substituting in the numbers, this equals 100 times 8.1 plus a half times 0 times 8.1 squared, and as always this term simplifies to 0, so we get 100 times 8.1 gives an answer of 810 metres. Part C says to calculate the final vertical velocity of the bomb. So looking back at the picture, the final vertical velocity will happen when the bomb is hitting the tank at this point down here. So again, because it's final vertical velocity that we want, we can consider the vertical motion of the bomb, and writing down SUVAT, we have minus 320 metres, just like we did in part A, U equals 0 metres per second, again just like we had before, V is what we're trying to find, a is minus 9.8 metres per second squared, and the time was what we calculated in part A to be 8.1 seconds. So I'm going to put a star next to V here because that's the one that we're trying to find, and using an equation of motion which has V in it, we could use V equals U plus AT to keep it nice and simple. Substituting in the numbers, we get 0 plus minus 9.8 times 8.1, which gives an answer of minus 79.4 metres per second. The reason we've got a negative sign here is because our bomb is travelling downwards, and we've defined downwards to be negative. Part D says to calculate the final horizontal velocity of the bomb. So writing down its SUVAT for the horizontal motion, we can write down that S equals 810 metres, U equals 100 metres per second, V is what we're trying to find, acceleration A is 0 metres per second squared as always for the horizontal acceleration, and time is 8.1 seconds which we calculated earlier. So we can put a star next to V since that's the one we're trying to find, and so using an equation of motion which has V in it, we can use V equals U plus AT. Substituting in the numbers we get 100 plus 0 times 8.1, so this term just disappears, which leaves us with V equals 100 meters per second, i.e. a constant horizontal velocity. Now a quicker way to have done this question is just to identify that the horizontal velocity of the bomb will always be constant, and that's always the case for any projectile so you could have done that just as a quicker way. Lastly, part E says to calculate the resultant velocity of the bomb on impact with the tank. Well, because we're talking about resultant velocity here, we're going to need to take into account both the vertical and the horizontal components of the final velocity, which means we're going to have to add vectors nose to tail. So this is just like what we did when we looked at resultant force vectors. So drawing our two vectors, we've got the final vertical velocity, which is going to be downwards on the tank, which is 79.4 meters per second, and we can label this as A. And then we've got our final horizontal velocity, which will be moving to the left, because that was the initial direction of the projectile. And we 
we can label this one as B and that is 100 meters per second. And our vectors there are already joined nose to tail, so we can now draw our resultant vector and add on the two arrows to show that that is the resultant vector and it's different to the individual vectors. We can then label this side as C and we can put C equals question mark because that's the magnitude that we're trying to find. So to find the magnitude, we use c squared equals a squared plus b squared Pythagoras, which equals 79.4 squared plus 100 squared, which equals 16,304. Now we can get c on its own by taking the square root of both sides, so we get the square root of 16304, which equals 128 meters per second if you put that into your calculator. Now remember we're dealing with a velocity vector here, so we need to find the direction as well. So to find the direction, we can start labeling some more things on our triangle. So we've got the right angle in there, we've then got our angle which is going to be theta in here, because remember the angle is defined next to the starting point. So there was my starting point over here. So remember we can use trigonometry for this, so we use tan theta equals opposite over adjacent, which equals the 79.4 over 100, which equals 0 0.794. And now to find theta, we'd need to take the inverse tan or shift tan on your calculator of 0 0.794, which if you put into your calculator will give you 38 degrees. We can therefore write down our final statement, which says the resultant velocity is equal to 128 meters per second at 38 degrees south of west. And the reason we've got south of west is because that is south down here, that is west along there, so we've gone 38 degrees south of west. Or you can state it using bearings, so you can write it as 128 meters per second at a bearing of 232. And the way we get 232 is remember we always define bearings with respect to 000, the north compass point. So starting at a compass point here of 000, then we get going from here all the way around to here gives us 270. And then if we just subtract the angle theta of 38 degrees from 270, then we get 232. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I appreciate it, make sure to give the video a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.